All right, folks, how's all doing? Uh, I'm calling this a layout update video, but to be honest, it's uh, it's more just a, a wee bit of a blether uh, just to bring you up to date with a few things. Um, I recently set up a Royal Mail PO box address um, just so I didn't have to keep giving out my home address to, to all and sundry. You know, when, when people are sending me locomotives for repair or donations or whatever, um, I just felt a bit more comfortable not uh, giving out my home address all the time. Um, it's not cheap to do though, uh, you know, it's quite expensive to set up a Royal Mail PO box, but uh, anyway, it's done and it's working, but um, I wasn't sure initially if it was working or not. So I put a, uh, a post on my community tab on the channel, just asking if a couple of people would do me a wee favor and just post me a wee box or you know, just an empty box. I was quite happy to reimburse postage um, just to test to see that the PO box is working because I didn't want to give people the address and then they'd send me you know, one of their treasured locomotives and it ended up going to goodness knows where. Um, so a few people responded to that uh, and uh, thank you so much to Steve, Mark and Martin for not only agreeing to, to test, the, the, test the PO box but uh, they also sent me a few wee things which was really nice of them. Steve of Dunmore Junction Model Railway sent me these that he got from Jeff at Scenic 3D. Um, we've got some wee bird tables, some bird feeders and nesting boxes, which is really nice. And uh, also some beehives complete with a, a bloke in a beekeeper's outfit. So I'll definitely be painting these up and placing them on the layout soon. Mark sent me this custom painted four wheel coach, which he's done a really nice job on. Um, I wouldn't mind giving that a bash with some four wheelers at some point. Martin sent me two other four-wheelers in blue and this Caledonian 040. Now, on the subject of the PO box, um, I'm not going to be one of those YouTubers that publishes the, the PO box on their channel and then get sent loads of stuff and they end up doing PO box unopening videos. Um, I will not be doing that. Um, if you want to get in touch with me uh, about sending me a locomotive for repair or a donation or whatever, Go to the FAQ in the description and you'll get to an email address that you can contact me on there. And that will give you the PO box address uh, in the reply, if I reply. I get an awful lot of emails and there's sometimes quite a few uh, uh, slip through the net. Uh, on the subject of local repairs, um, you know, up to now, uh, I, you know, I just do this as a hobby. Um, I certainly don't run it as any kind of business and I don't really make any money out of doing the repairs. Um, but uh, the way I've been working it, you know, people contact me and ask if I'll repair this locomotive or whatever. Um, and it's always been with a view to, you know, making a video of, of the repair. Um, and I've ended up with a, a bit of a backlog of locomotives going back a couple of years that, you know, I've still never really got around to. And uh, to me, that's not really working, you know. and. I think if people are just you know, specifically want their, their locomotive to, to feature in a video, well, you know, they will just have to wait. But if they just want the locomotive repaired, I'm quite happy to do that off camera because I can do repairs off camera much, much quicker. You know, doing the repair doesn't really take that long. It's uh, doing the video and doing the editing of the video and everything that's associated with it that takes so much time. Um, so I'm kind of open to doing a lot more repairs. So if you do have a, lo a locomotive that you would like repaired, by all means contact me. Um, if you're not fussed about it featuring in a video, um, yeah, I'm much more likely to say, yep, here you go, this is how you send it to me. Um, and I'll try and repair it for you as quickly as possible. If you specifically want it in a video, um, you know, you, you may have to wait. If it's a good video subject, um, that's something I may... Uh, uh, feature sooner rather than later, you know, if it's something particularly interesting. But if it's another Class 37 or another Flying Scotsman or whatever, I'm more likely to go, you, you, right, okay, yeah, you need to wait a wee bit because, you know, I don't want to end up repeating myself with videos doing the same locomotives over and over. Um, so, yeah, I, I will always pick and choose which locomotives um, I feature in a video and which I don't. Um, but, I am open to doing a lot more repairs, so by all means get in touch if you've got something you want me to look at. Uh, at the moment I'm not running this as any kind of business, but uh, I do have some terms and conditions that I send to people 
and ask them to agree to uh, when you know they're going to send me a locomotive because I've got to protect myself a wee bit. Um, however, next year um, I plan to retire from my day job, and that's going to give me a lot more time to do stuff, which is great. But it's going to uh, leave me with an awful lot less money. So I am going to have to you know kind of rethink things a bit and maybe do the repairs on a slightly more. Uh, you know, adopt a slightly more professional approach to doing the repairs, not with the, I mean, not with a view to making a huge amount of money out of it, but I'm maybe just going to have to increase the income of it a little bit. Um, and I also think I'll probably be monetizing the videos on the channel, uh, which is not something I, you know, I want to do, but I would be silly not to, to be honest. Um, We'll see how that goes. I did monetize them once before, but I stopped it because I was getting <laughs> uh, tax demands and stuff. And I'm like, oh, I can't deal with all that. So I, I demonetized them. But uh, next year when I retire, it'll be a different story. I'll need to speak to an accountant to uh, see how it'll all work out. But uh, that's next year. Uh, right, okay, so what's the latest on the layout? So I'd kind of paused work on the viaduct section for a bit, but I've started again. Um, I added in a wee bit more uh, landscape at the back there and uh, I've started painting what's going to be the river, a waterfall through the arch there. Uh, through this arch here is going to be a road. It all looks right mess at the moment. But that's what I'm working on just now. This last section I'll be starting work on soon. Um, I've actually had a wee bit of a, a change of plan. Um, if you remember, I was going to have a tunnel mouth about there, so trains would come round the shuttle and disappear into the, the tunnel there, just to hide these two sidings. Um, you can see I've positioned this tunnel mouth here, so this is what I'm now planning. Um, so where I was going to have a hill just coming down there, I'm actually going to have it come across. So all this section here, up to those blue lines there, that's where the other tunnel mouth will be. Let's just shift that. Yeah, so that's where the other tunnel mouth will be. I'll need to get hold of one. Um, so yeah, that's going to be all covered up to there. Um, I'm going to have to make sure it's removable, um, which will be a bit uh, yeah interesting to engineer. Um, but I plan to have maybe a little village or something up here. It, it gives me a bit more surface to model some stuff on. Um, and I think... Uh, It'll look better because what I'm planning is the road coming up here, across a bridge there, and uh, I was going to have to have a second bridge if I was bridging this bit. Um, but it was all going to be a bit up and down, and I wasn't sure what I was going to be doing in here. But now that I've come to think of it, I think it makes more sense to cover all that and just have a single bridge crossing the tracks there, and then the road coming up over the hill, and then I can have buildings either side of the road and build a little village. So that's the plan for that bit. Um, I'm looking forward to getting a start on that actually, but I'll need to get this bit finished. Uh, just quickly going back to the, the Caledonian 040 that Martin sent me. Um, I've already got one of these. Um, you've maybe seen it before in uh, previous videos. Uh, I rigged up a, a makeshift tender for it and uh, I've got pickups in the tender so it, uh, it runs much, much better over points and stuff. Um, so I thought I'd maybe do the same with this one. I think I'll use this old trying wagon, but uh, I thought it'd be good to do a video of that, of uh, giving this a quick service and rigging up a little makeshift tender from an old wagon and uh, putting the pickups in and stuff. Um, so that'll be a, a future video very soon. Uh, right, okay, that's me. I'll put some trains on and I'll catch you later.